First, learn how to budget. Typically, 50% of your monthly income should go towards needs, things like phone bills or insurance premiums. 30% should be kept for wants, dining out or gym memberships. The rest goes into savings. Financial planning is not really a, you know, an interest point for people, right? Just be aware of how much you're consuming um, in terms of your expenses every month and break it down to different pies and start from there. Um, you can be saving $100 first every month. There are many things you can save for, but that comes after you set up your emergency fund and clear any loans you might have. We always tell people that as a guide, they should have three to six months of their monthly expenses in cash. It's really just a guideline because uh, some people, if they have a job that is a bit more specialised and if they lose this job, they may take a longer time to find it and maybe they need uh, six to 12 months. But which comes first, the emergency fund or clearing your student loans? Once you have reached your emergency fund info, then you could use 100% of your savings into uh, clearing out your student loans. While running at higher interest rates of about 5%, student loans often don't incur a penalty for early repayment. You could do ad hoc cash repayments and clear it out ahead of schedule. And that would be good so that you're not incurring a 5% interest outflow while your, your savings are just not earning as much of an interest. Try to do it within two to three years of, of your graduation. After setting up your emergency fund and clearing your loans, it's time to save for important life milestones, such as a wedding, a first home or renovation. And while 15% is the minimum you should save, you can afford to save even more at this age. The younger you are, the more you can save. So a very good time to save more than 15% is when you are young and when you are uh, older. The in-between, the sandwich generation, they have young kids, they've got parents to take care of. Next, start investing, no matter how small the amount. Starting small gives you the room to make mistakes and learn from your experiences. So starting as small as $100 allows you to, to take the responsibility of learning how I can invest towards bigger goals in the future. So instead of just looking at it as I need to invest towards my retirement, which might be really um, hard for people to accept in their 20s, uh, learning the journey of what investment suits, how, what kind of investment suits them, um, the maybe getting burned, understanding, okay, actually I can't take that much risk, but the amount of money would not change my life too much. I've gotten started. One ambitious target to work towards is $100,000 by the age of 30. Chris says that's not impossible if you start young. So I think, yes, 100000 at the age of 30 years old seems like impossible, but I really think it's realistic. I know of people who, uh, who have done it. Um, and, you know, I, I, I know my son because I, I asked him before. I know at a very young age when he was serving NS, he was already setting aside his NS uh, pay into a saving account. It's like a standing instruction. You set aside every month a certain amount, $100, $200 into this special account that gives you a slightly higher interest rate, right? So that's the first step you can do. And then when you build up the amount, you can start investing your money. Right? And as you go to work, you build up the habit of setting aside more and more and more into either savings or investment. So I think it's possible. It is, um, uh, you have a higher chance of achieving it if you invest it. Of course, if you put everything in a bank account, it's going to be harder because the interest will be lower. If you are uh, a lady and you start work at the age of 21, 22 years old, you've got a good eight years to save towards that $100,000. Uh, I, I think it's possible. Also, do a little housekeeping when it comes to insurance. It is more important at this stage of your life to make sure that you have got adequate medical coverage. So look out for the hospitalization and surgical plan that your parents have bought you and ask yourself whether that's going to meet your healthcare expectation. And finally, what not to do fall victim to lifestyle creep. That's when you start spending more and faster 
than you can afford. Often we find that people who are earning more than 10,000, 15, they actually come back with less savings than people who are earning less than half of what they earn. This is extremely dangerous for um, graduates who are earning uh, a pretty high salary for a start. These days we have like, you know, engineers that are coming in with $8,000 per month salary, lawyers. But these people have like a windfall every month for the beginning and they start spending a lot. And reaching their 30s, they find that actually they didn't save much money because they've just been enjoying life so much that their lifestyle has cost five times easily than what they expected. So um, one of the tricks that we, we often share is for every pay increment, uh, just pretend you don't have it and just save the entire thing because your lifestyle did not change. It did, you didn't need it financially and now you can do with more savings with that.